everyone, in today's video for an at-home lab, I'm going to show you how to do the simulation EvoDots, which is a pretty fun program, and it was actually developed by a biology professor, John Heron. Now this program is a little old, in fact, it's an old prototype for a different program, so you may have some trouble downloading it or finding it for your computer. I'll provide the link to the file in this video, but if it doesn't work, or you'd rather not download it, you can also get the data from observing the results that I perform in this video. So stay tuned for our EvoDot simulation. Alright, so in EvoDots, what we're going to be doing is playing this game and collecting data Data to see if it simulates any sort of natural selection in a particular population. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to open the EvoDots program. Again, if you're not able to do this, you can just follow along on my screen here. So the first thing we're going to do is click New Population. And this is going to populate the population with 50 dots. These are individuals. Remember, the most important thing about evolution or natural selection I want you to remember is that individuals don't evolve, populations evolve. So we're going to see if we see a change in the frequencies of traits within this population over time. And the traits here are colors and speed. So we can use this bar graph in this upper right corner to record the number of each dot color in the data table. You don't need to count these individual dots. And we can label that in our own data table, which could look something like this. You can also click this arrow here, and this will provide us with our starting numbers. For our generation zero, or our starting generation, we have for three of the first category individuals, which is black, seven of the second category, which is purple, nine blue, nine green, nine yellow, 10 orange, and three red. Once we've filled out these numbers on our data table, we're gonna run a 20 second timer. This will be one particular generation. We're the predator here, and we're gonna try to eat or click on as many dots as we can in 20 seconds. Don't try to select for your favorite color, just try to eat as many dots as you can. Remember, you're a hungry predator. It may be easier to do this with a partner, so if you feel like partnering up, you can also do this, or you can just watch me be the predator on my screen. All right, 20 seconds, starting now. My time is up, so now I'm going to hit stop, and I want to reproduce before I take my next generation's data. So now I see generation one, after my surviving dots have reproduced, I want to take these numbers here and put them into my data table. So I'll enter this data for generation one. Now I'm going to run again. We want to keep doing the simulation until we've run through at least five generations. So here we go, running the simulation for 20 seconds. All right, stop. Time is up. Stop. And now I want to reproduce before I record. Okay, my next generation. I would enter my data here. All right, let's do it again. Oh my gosh, this Stop. All right, now I'm going to reproduce and get my data again. All right, let's run it another time. Stop. All right, and I'm going to reproduce my fourth generation. Oh, it looks like I've eliminated certain uh, individuals that were slower. So there is some change in frequencies in the traits in my population here. But we're going to run it one more time. How many you can get. And my time is up. Phew. All right, reproduce one more time, and this is my final number, so make sure to include this in your data table and see what you can get. If you can't see all of the numbers available to you, obviously I got over 100 and over 200 in some of these. What we'll have to just do is you can also just estimate on the graph here, or you can right-click Control-C and Control-V onto your data table, and all of the numbers should show up appropriately. All right, now that we've run the simulation once with all of our data, you could run it again with a partner if you would like just to get some more information. And then you want to go through and think about some of these questions. Does our population of dots evolve? Do we see a change from the starting population, which is here, to the current population in the frequency of traits? 
Think about too how these individuals were born with the traits because after they were born or after we saw reproduction, the dots themselves never changed their size or their color. So that shows that these traits are something that they are born with and individuals aren't changing or evolving. The population themselves, the frequency of these colors and these speeds in the populations are changing. Think about what role me, the predator, was playing in this particular simulation and what competitive advantage certain individuals had over others. Now, if you have extra time or you wanna try some fun things, you can change up some of the settings in this game by changing some of these settings or you can select options and have the dots maybe vary in visibility this time instead of speed. So we'll create a new population and run. And oh my gosh, some of them are able to camouflage in the night. It's much harder to select them. So if you're able to access the simulation on your own, feel free to play with, around with it. Also, you can also reproduce as many dots as you want to try, but at some point there are gonna be too many dots and there's not gonna be any more for you to be able to run your population with. Whoa, so many dots. I bet I could definitely win now. If you need to go back and look at some of this video again to collect your data, feel free to do so. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.